Hi, Dr. Marianne Trent of Good Thinking Psychological Services. Uh, nice to see you all. Um, I'll just give you a minute whilst I catch my breath. I just ran up the stairs <laughs> and then down again. <laughs> I'm puffed out. <laughs> Hope you're okay. Uh, nice to see you. I won't name check you unless you say hi to me, just in terms of confidentiality. Um, if you say hi, I'll assume you're happy with a, a welcome. It's 14, 17. Are you all okay today? It's been freakishly hot this afternoon. Really caught me off guard. Um, wasn't expecting it at all. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you found, but I was either too hot or too cold. Um, I hope that you've all had a good day. Um, I'm going to pop my glasses on the floor. That's why I had to go upstairs because suddenly realised I didn't have them and I wouldn't be able to see a single thing. Hi, hey, Sonia. Nice to see you. Chatted with you earlier. Hi, Kate. <laughs> um, right, what I will do, um, I don't know if any of you guys... Oh, I've forgotten my little notepad. Hold on, I made some notes. Hold the, hold the line, caller. That was a low point, wasn't it? Sorry, did we miss anybody? Did <laughs> we lose anyone? Um, right, what I would do is I would just oh, kick that so that uh, it moves everything and we can't see. Right, um, welcome to the Facebook Live for helping you think about pertinent issues. Oh, that's a kind of phrase that people put in their forms, isn't it? Pertinent issues. Hi, Rabia. Um, about um, yeah, applying for clinical training. So if you'd like to be a trainee clinical psychologist, hi Sham, um, thinking about what you might put and any questions you might have. So um, let's just do a little advert to start with. If you could consider liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel, Good Thinking Psychological Services, I'd be very grateful. Similarly, if you could like me on Facebook, if you don't already, Good Thinking Psychological Services. Hi Amelia, you're gonna roar into a song for us. Um, Instagram, Good Thinking Psychological, I believe is my um, handle. Um, Evie Elizabeth and Emily Ann are watching. How do you do that? How do you do two of you? How do you do that together? That's very clever. I've never seen that before. But I'm oh, sorry, I've name checked you now and I, did, I said I wasn't, wasn't going to do that, but oh, Evie said hi anyway. Um, LinkedIn, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. It's Marianne Trent. Um, interact with me, chat with me, um, more than happy with that. If you enjoy what we've done, then I would love it if you could consider leaving me a testimonial via my website, goodthinkingpsychology.co.uk, or just pop something on social media, that'd be wonderful as well. Uh, don't forget that I um, have the Our Tricky Brain, which is a compassion-focused therapy product priced at £80 plus uh, postage and packaging. More information can be found by checking out my shop online. Um, and then I am writing a grief book at the moment as well. So if you wanted to think about um, contributing a story to that, um, if you could make contact with me as soon as possible, would be great. Um, hi again, Melly. Um, and if you happen to be a really good graphic designer um, or have very strong skills in graphic design and fancy designing me a book cover um, please get in contact as soon as possible today is Monday the 21st if you are interested in that in the next couple of days let me know and I will trade you for a free form review um, so get in there whilst the offer is hot hi Lynn hi Melly Okay, that's all my adverts, um, which is not too bad, is it? Um, four minutes in. Thank you so much for those of you who joined me last week. Um, we got over 200 people live at one stage, um, and 1,800 people, in excess of 1,800 people, have watched this video on Catch Up, so that's great. I've received lots of lovely compliments and comments, which is just brilliant. That's, um, you know, really pleased to know that you're finding it useful, um, and it's sort of tick in the box for what you want it to do. People sent me lovely messages just saying how it's really inspired them, how it's helped to just give them confidence when they were feeling wobbly, just give them some renewed enthusiasm and vigour, which is, you know, brilliant. That's what I'm here for. And people have said, I really don't have a qualified psychologist to speak to. So it's really useful having um, your opinion. Um, hi, everybody that's just joining. So if you saw my little cheeky um, sort of couple of hours to go, message you'll have seen um, I said something and put it in brackets 
And that's my first tip really. Um, let's just think about brackets. If you pop something um, in brackets at the end of a sentence, to me, personal preference, bit of a grammar, <laughs> a grammar stickler, it says you've not explained it properly. It says you're kind of adding something in to add in a bit more information that you didn't quite know how to put or thought, I haven't quite nailed it. What I'm gonna say to you is nail it. Do the sentence better. Think about how important that bit at the end is. If it's really important, consider moving it up, consider putting it to the front. Consider perhaps breaking it down into two, um, hi Ellen, consider breaking it down into two sentences um, or consider whether you need all of the stuff in there. But for me, brackets complicate things and don't add things, they take away things because it leaves me just thinking that you've not thought very hard about your sentence structure. Does that make sense? Is that shooting you down in flames? Are you really upset about that? Give me some likes, give me some like sobbing faces if you hate it. <laughs> okay, we've got a like, thank you. Um, okay, my next top tip um, before, if you've got questions, fire them away, and once I'm through with uh, my kind of top tips, um, I'll plough right on. Um, oh, we've got lots of likes, delayed likes. <laughs> Thank you. I want to love. Oh, you're too kind. Okay. What I want to be seeing in forms and what other people want to be able to see is that you are operating um, within your competence. So currently, you are unqualified, and as such, you don't hold clinical responsibility for your caseload or whatever you're doing, your supervisors do. So when you're running groups um, or co-facilitating groups or you know, sitting in on assessments, you kind of need to be saying, even if you're kind of taking the lead, you need to be saying um, that you, you're doing that under supervision because otherwise it's kind of dangerous. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, you need to be just highlighting that you're not a renegade practitioner, you're not running the show. And I know um, sometimes that it can feel like you're running the show, um, but you're legally not allowed to. You do not hold a clinical responsibility, hi Jane. Um, so you need to be just mentioning within some of the stuff that you do that you're doing it under supervision and that you know mention somewhere that you, what you like about supervision if you reflect on things in supervision how it helps you to develop um, and similarly to that my third point is you know you need to be saying what you hope to gain from training you, you're not the finished article if you were you wouldn't need clinical training um, you need um, Good question, Ika. Uh, Iki, sorry. Does that apply if you're the clinical lead? No, I guess not. You're still supervised though, are you? Because all of us are supervised. Um, could you say a bit more? So are you, you know, you, you, I guess I'm perhaps naively assuming that most people are kind of band four, band five type work, but if you were perhaps coming to it from a different career, um, so perhaps if you were, um, you know, a, a band seven nurse or something and, and doing stuff. Um, yeah, say a bit more if you can, Icky. Do it as a new comment, because otherwise I won't see it. But yeah, if you're a clinical lead, then obviously you do have the responsibility. So within the IAP service, so hi, Cara. Um, what band are you, if you don't mind me asking, Icky? If that's not too personal a question, you don't mind sharing. Wait, wait, why your key types? <laughs> Radio silence. Thanks for my love, Cara. Yeah, I mean, I guess in answer to your question, Nikki, if you're the clinical lead, that's okay. But m the majority of us, you're supervised with external, not within the service band 8 a. Icky, and you want to be a clin psych? That's like that's quite the re that's quite, you're going to have a pay cut. I remember when I first went from band four assistant to band six. That payday was a good payday. I was like, hallelujah. Um, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna notice the pay drop. Um, so you need to be saying what you hope to gain from training. I don't know if I finished my last point, um, but you're not the you're not the full ticket. Um, oh, Icky, oh dear. Start making some batch cooked meals now. <laughs> um, yeah, so you need to be 
demonstrating some weaknesses, but then I guess you need to kind of reframe them to think about, you know, what what is also good about you, but what you still need some help with and what, you know, perhaps you can recognise what you haven't yet had experience in and you're looking forward to, you know, if you haven't worked with people with learning disabilities and you can't get any experience between now and December, then you could be saying, you you, you know, you're looking forward to furthering your experience um, of, of that population within clinical within clinical training, for example. Um, that's it for my um, my notes that I noted down. I hope that was useful. Let me just scroll back through the questions. I'm really sorry if people asked me questions last week. Um, it got to a certain point and then it wouldn't allow me to, to load any more, so I couldn't see them. So if we don't have a chance to answer your questions today, um, do feel free to highlight it to me. Um, what if my experience is a PWP, so psychological wellbeing practitioner? Is that Daniela? Do I hold clinical responsibility? I don't. I don't think you do. Um, has that been explained to you? Because that's the first thing that I do as a supervisor, is to explain who holds, you know, the clinical responsibility. So I've got a supervision contract. If that would be useful, please um, let me know, and I can um, ping that across to you, um, just to ascertain who who the buck stops with. Um, so I know that when I qualified as a band seven, it was like, well, actually it's you now. You know, you you hold that clinical responsibility. So I would be asking that question, Daniela. I would ask that of your supervisor if you're not sure of the answer. So I don't know specifically, but I kind of think you ought to know. So that's a question that I'd be wanting to answer. Is that useful? Does that make sense, people? Um, okay, good, some likes. Sham, what is your advice on how to answer the question? If there, let me let's see more. If there are any other factors relevant to assessing your application, please give brief details here. There is a 700 character limit for this question. Well, Sham, here's my top tip. I am not excited by applications that just list loads of training in that. For me, that is your opportunity to just talk about some extra bits. Um, so I think, did you catch my lives um, or my replays the last two weeks? Because I think I might even have read my um, my example for that question last week, Sham. Did you catch that? Um, I think it's an opportunity to, to think about stuff from a slightly different perspective. Um, so to mention stuff that's relevant, um, but extra. So, you know, I went travelling around the world for six months in 2003 um, and so I put that kind of thing um, if you have um, if you've put anything that you think needs some further explanation then that's a good opportunity to use that as well um, okay do you want me to read that again Sham would that be helpful Having interest outside of psychology is an effective way to unwind and manage the daily stresses of a busy career. I volunteer with Brownies. I really enjoy spending time with these amazing children and their limitless energy. It never fails to astound me. Uh, I relish my weekly Pilates lessons. I like the physical strength, stamina and clarity of thought this exercise allows. I love travelling and enjoyed six months backpacking in 2003. I also value spending time with my friends and family. For that reason, I'm careful to limit my singing practice to the confines of my car. So what I've done there is I've said, basically, I've got a driving licence, but I haven't told you that I've got a driving licence. I've caught, sort of made it a bit more interesting. Um, so if that's useful, that's what I put. I don't know how, how many characters that is because that has changed since I applied. You just used to get a space and you had to use that. But I would use that to just fill in a bit more information about you. If you have done some training, I think the weakness of these forms is that there isn't a section for training. There's only a section for qualifications. So if you haven't got a qualification from a training, piece of training you've done, but actually it's really useful and it's really novel and it makes you quite distinct. So perhaps you've done, I don't know, lots of training in systemic approaches or, you know, then you can mention that. But I guess I might be mentioning that with some other stuff. So if you haven't mentioned it anywhere else, it might be useful to think about how you've adjusted excuse me, how you've adjusted some of your working practices to encompass, I don't know, the COVID stuff. I feel like these applications are very different to any other application. Um, and this COVID stuff has changed the NHS forever. You know, we've now got, um, we've now got 
remote ways of working, which we just didn't have even six months ago. Um, so I think it's a really useful opportunity to showcase you, but showcase it relevantly. Does that answer your question, Sham? But make sure that anything you haven't been able to squeeze in anywhere else, if it is really important, is there, but don't make it too dry. Uh, can you please explain the question on publications and dissemination? Sure. Um, so when I was uh, an assistant, I realised I didn't have any publications. So a publication would be like something in a book, um, it would be something in a journal. Um, and so what I did was I asked a trainee psychologist, oh no I didn't, hold on, let me get my story straight. Um, someone had already done some research in the department before I joined and were struggling to find the time to write it up. So I said, can I help in exchange for um, you know, third author on the paper, please, would be lovely. So I wrote up all the introduction section and some of the methods and things like that. Um, and so that gave me a third author, so then that was a publication, so I could put that on my form. And then um, I went to a conference and I wrote a conference report um, for, like, Siege newsletter? I think that was it. Um, and they published my conference report, um, my review. I made it a little bit humorous, I think that helped. Um, and so I was able to put that as a publication as well. So that was someone else who'd been able to see my name in an academic journal. So that counted as a publication. Um, I have recently, um, oh, shall I show you? Hold on a sec. Did I lose anybody? <laughs> Oh, 52 people. I've recently, very excitingly, been published in this here book. Um, I've got four and a half pages, which I'm very excited about. Um, I probably can't find them. Um, but yeah, that would count as publication. So that's going down. Um, if I was applying for any jobs, that would go down as a publication, because that's pretty cool, isn't it? You know, four and a half pages in an actual proper book. This is Let's Talk About the First Year of Parenting by Amy Brown. If you'd like to check it out, it's on my website in media. So my publications, in answer to your question, Luce, if you check out my website, goodthinkingpsychology.co.uk, click on media and you'll see all my publications. So you'll see that I was recently interviewed um, live on the BBC News, so that would count as a media publication. You can see that I've recently written something for The Guardian, you can see that I have um, written for Grazia Daily. Um, I've got something else coming out in a few different publications as well, but I wouldn't like to say what they were. Keep an eye out on my website and my social media and you'll be the first to know. And then I'm writing a book on grief, so that will be a publication. Does that make sense, Luz? So think about what you can do. You could write to any blooming magazine you like, see if they want to publish something by you. You could count that as a publication but think about trying to make it psychological would be useful. Um, you've got time, you've got time, especially if it was gonna be an online publication because they want content all the time. Um, yeah, Luce, especially if you don't have any publications, you've got time, you've got time, make it happen. Um, you know, get chatting to people who are doing research. Um, I, when I was an assistant, asked the um, trainee who was doing research if she wanted any help with her research and I, um, struck the bargain that I'd be an honorary research assistant. That's what I did, so it went down on my research experience, so rather than publications. Does that, is that helpful? Give me a laugh if that's useful, Luce. Jamie. How would you answer the question on, what would you hope to gain from training? 750 of those characters. I'm guessing that's a love from you, Luce, thank you. I have some ideas about my specific interest in some modalities. However, I'm unsure if I'm on the right track with answering this and whether you would like to hear something else. It's a very long sentence, Jamie. So if this was actually on your form, I'd be saying, let's split that down, let's break that up. That's long, because I couldn't do it in one breath, okay? Um, what are, what do you hope to gain? You know, when you look at your CV, what are you missing? Um, so what I was missing, uh, so I'd done, um, I'd done working with older adults, I'd done forensic um, with youths and older adults, 
I'd worked with working age adults, I'd worked with physical disabilities, um, what else I'd done? I'd, I'd worked with students uh, and I'd I'd done some stuff with the brownies so I, I, I noticed that gap in my CV so I reached out and did some voluntary work with the brownies so I would say in that respect I'm hoping you know I'm looking forward to gaining clinical experience of working with um, with children and young people um, so I had clinical experience of adolescence but with children I didn't have any but what I wanted to do and think what I reflected on in interviews was that it's really useful to have some experience of actually normal children so a mainstream children so in a, in, a, in the brownies group there's a you know there's a spectrum um, of different abilities but it's giving me a really useful indication for range it's, it's letting me you know see how children generally respond to boundaries it's letting me um it's letting me what else is it letting me do and you see i'm talking about it present tense and that's what i always do in an application as well because if i'm reading your application and it's past tense it makes me think you can't do that anymore so you did it but now you don't do it so cara if you're watching what do you think do you think that you're more likely to write in past tense give me a like and present tense give me a love and if you're not watching at all then this isn't going to work um, but I want to see that you've still got those skills so I would always write my applications in the present tense so you know working with adolescents to help further their understanding of XYZ um, rather than I worked with adolescents um, there's a love but I don't know whose love that was I worked with adolescents and we ran a group but that kind of implies that your skills are no longer valid or current. So I would always, even in my qualified jobs, I personally would write it in the present tense. Also, you can save space. So working with is less than I worked with. Um, probably, <laughs> probably not much, is it? But when you're looking at saving characters, you know, if you keep having to write, I worked with, I did that, um, then, oh, people are liking the saving space option. Um, if you keep having to explain that, then you're going to just keep losing space. Um, so I think, Jamie, it's going to be so unique to you, so you need to look at your areas of your CV that need strengthening and just be honest about that. Um, you know, or you could think about perhaps reaching out for some voluntary work, but I know that's tricky at the time. Um, and, you know, people talk about honorary work as being exploitative and, you know, I don't have time, but actually I did my honorary brownie stuff, um, you know, I think it was like a Wednesday evening. Um, and, you know... The occasional summer camp sort of popping along for a day um, so you don't necessarily need to do it um, to lose any money to do it does that answer your question Jamie Lopez cool name I'm an associate mental health worker I'm trying to understand the clinical experience I have that I can reflect on this is a band for role and I'm also considering if this too too low an experience to apply um, and I was a band for assistant um, a couple of times so the banding shouldn't matter, Lopez. Uh, an associate, associate mental health worker, that sounds cool. I guess it depends what you do. Um, it's hard to know without knowing what you do, but anything in mental health is relevant, I think. You know, if, you can, if you've got any psychologists in your team or nearby, so I've kicked you again, Lopez, um, I would ask if you can dob in every now and then to think about psychological concepts. Um, if you don't ask, you don't get. Um, is that useful? Amelia Lily. Do you think it's okay to start the first question, experiences, etc., with a personal anecdote of why I chose psych? Or should I get straight into my experience? I think if you can, if you think it's important and you can um, make it relevant, not too long, um, I think that's absolutely okay. Um, yeah, I think if, so long as you're happy with what you're writing and you're confident with the way you write it, then just you just direct people through your form so you're just making people feel at ease and you're explaining what you're doing as you're going along um, so there's no questions there's no confusions um, and that reminds me of another point that I think correct me if I'm wrong that the trust you work for the really long names of trusts count towards your word count and some of them are really 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 long and then you've got no room to say anything. So I would think about whether there's any kind of appropriate shortenings that the trust even themselves use. Um, so, you know, I, um, 
in a trust I've worked for, Warwickshire, it's appropriate to put W-A-R-K, um, which saves you quite a few characters um, when you're kind of looking at all the trusts and whether you can just squeeze some of that. So I know, it, I know that isn't what you were asking, Amelia, but it kind of um, it jogged my memory when we said about that and um, just thinking about saving space. So um, I think as so long as you can um, feel confident in what you're saying and you're not feeling like you're losing space to say things elsewhere, then it's absolutely fine. Just explain why you're doing things and be confident in it. Um, Sham, you've given me a no but with a sad face. But I don't know what that means. Could you say a bit more if I upset you? <laughs> Has it all gone dreadfully wrong? Was it when I left the room to go and get the book and you were sad that I'd gone? Um, oh, now you said yes, please, Sham, and I don't know what that's for. Uh, LJ Murray, cool name. What helps to make your application stand out is to make it to make it as cool as you, LJ. <laughs> it's to make it unique to you, but not in a way that's wacky, um, but just something that means that nobody else could have written that form. You know, we can all wow you with fancy words about, you know, I don't know, I don't even know if this is a concept, I'm gonna string some random words together, but like implicit validity and the liability of the, you know, gender factors and the constraints of the modern world. Um, how interesting is it and are you saying anything? So don't just give me psycho waffle, give me something that's your unique take on psychology um, and what what makes you get out of bed each day, you know? Life is not always easy, um, but you know, I woke up at 3.30 this morning because um, my brain decided to switch itself on uh, and then I was busy thinking about contents pages for my book and I was like come on brain we could do this later but you know I'm just motivated someone's laughing at me getting up so I didn't get up I didn't get up I just was awake awake for a couple of hours and I did go back to sleep again um but it's just like oh I'm just excited by life um I'm really excited to be writing my book. I'm really excited to be, to be doing this with you guys at the moment. This is motivating to me. You know, 59 of you are watching live. You're asking me questions and people have fed back all week how superbly helpful this was. And that's motivating to me. So this is why I do what I do. Uh, and I wanna know why you do what you do and why it keeps you coming back. So, um, you know, this is not the easiest of careers, but I kind of find it effortless, effortless because I love it. I can't imagine not doing it. Um, does that make sense? Jamie, in your qualifications and experience, which says Seymour, it's a long one, should you not mention all your qualifications, e.g. BSc, MSc, low intensity interventions? I didn't want to go on about it if they would already see it from the application. Shouldn't I just showcase the good or important parts of what I have done as part of some of them are my work, things I'm proud of? I guess it depends on so you've got, I think you've got to put your BSc, I think you've got to put your MSc. Um, I would say if you've, if you've got a qualification from your low intensity interventions, I, I would list them in the qualification section because you're probably gonna score points for those qualifications, um, especially with MSc, like yeah, that, that definitely needs to be in there and your undergrad. Um, I would say any, anything qualification-y I would put there. Um, but in terms of occupational experience, you know, if you once worked at Tesco, but you just stacked shelves, not very important job, key workers, I get that. But it's not that relevant to psychology, um, unless you haven't got much space and actually you worked in customer services and, and they picked you because you were particularly good with people. But what I would say is, they probably, you know, I, went, I used to work at Boots, um, loved it, had the best time of my life, like made such great friends. Um, when I was between when I went, between when I was sixteen and then I stayed on during during uni holidays as well, loved it. Had a bar, had a blast. Um, really good fun. I was good at my job as well. Didn't put it on my clinical form because it's not clinically relevant. So don't put every job you've ever had. So I did put um, you know my university job. Um, I did put uh, which was supporting disabled disabled students as I said earlier. I did put that I'd been a home carer because it was relevant because I was then able to talk about actually how important it was for me to spend time with people, empowering them to to live independently. And I think I was probably able to put that actually, 
you know, I, I used to like doing extra extra jobs like that were that were nice for people to help help them have comfort um, and to feel like they were important. So. Um, if I had extra time, I'd ask if they wanted, like, you know, cream rubbed into their legs or something. Um, something that made them feel like I'd noticed them. Um, because I loved that job, honestly. One of my favourite jobs. But it's the job I probably have lost most sleep about ever. You know, wor worrying if um, little Dotty, um, who's like 80 or whatever, that's not a real name, I've made that up, don't sue me for confidentiality. Um, worrying if I'd locked her door at night. And then thinking, I probably did. Did I? Um, because it felt like I was in a position of responsibility um, whereas you know if you're working on a ward you share that responsibility but if it's just me that's locked Dottie at all then it's only me and I was like oh <laughs> please let me have done it and I'd go in the morning it'd be locked I'm like Phew. wow thank god for that um, so yeah I would I would put it but I just make sure that it's relevant so if you've done a but even if it's not relevant, it probably might still count in terms of qualification. So if you've done, you know, a qualification in I don't know, graphic design and it was a degree, then it might still count. I don't know. It's worth it's worth calling the if you've got questions, it's worth calling the university to inquire um, because you know, or or a number of universities. If you've got specific questions about the course, then it's useful to know. So I know that some universities certainly when I was applying wouldn't consider you if you had like a low two one unless you also had a master's so if you're not sure I would call them um, just to, you don't want to waste your application if they're just going to look at it and go no transcripts not high enough we're not seeing you because then you're just going to get a no um, so if you're not sure ask or ask a trainee who's on it already um, but it's better to ask the actual admin team I would think Hannah, I was a registered manager in the children's services within the residential care sector. Even that's quite long, isn't it? With this, I was regularly Ofsteaded, wowzers, I know what an Ofsted is, um, reporting my work within the services. Would this be appropriate for publication? Hmm. Is your name, noted? Is your name mentioned in it? I think a publication would... I don't, I don't know, Hannah. You've stumped me. Probably not, but it does showcase your exceptional talents. Um, probably not. Have you got um, Have you got someone else you can ask that question to? I'm sorry, I feel like I've let you down, Hannah. Um, you could stick it in there if you've got spare characters. Um, I guess my research is out there, so I'll share it. It was. Stubbs, which was Brendan Stubbs, who's like a really excellent physio who's doing great stuff down in London in research. I was his first ever research paper. But since then, he's left me in the dust. He's got like hundreds. Um, he was recently, probably not even that recent now, did a, um, a podcast with um, someone or other, Chatterjee, I think. Sorry, I've forgotten his name. Anyone can help me out there. Um, he's doing really great stuff down in London, but I, it, was, it was Stubbs, Cooper Evans, Durham, which is what I was then, and uh, Montenegro, and that was my first ever paper. So that was my publication because I was in it, um, and this one is my publication because there's a whole four and a half pages written only by me. Um, so I think possibly not Hannah, um, but yeah, give it some thought. What are your thoughts about abbreviations? Easy, e.g. C, B, T, P, W, P, A, P, R, A, L, T, H, Cs, at, etc. You can use them, but you probably should explain them first. Yeah, explain it, put it in brackets. I will allow you to use brackets in that instance. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the top of the show. Um, but it's a, it's a bit it's a bit muggy, isn't it, to, to put it without explaining it. Because there's always a chance that someone might, a service user might be reviewing that and wouldn't know what you had said. Um, is it useful to incorporate theory into your answers to your experience? Well, I would always do that in an interview. So if someone asked me a question, I'd always underpin it with theory. So it doesn't hurt, Emma. Um, and I'd always weave in trust values as well. Um, or corporation values, even if they don't ask about them. Because it makes you look extra geeky and like you're just amazing. What does dissemination mean, Luce? It just means getting it out there. It's just like, I've disseminated that, so it's just like, delivered, put it out there, got it out there, done it, 
<laughs> it's available for all. I guess it means not private. So unless, until I read this, this was private. Now I've disseminated it. Um, uh, Jamie Osborne. Replying to Jamie. Another long one, sorry. It's all right. We've got time, I think. Yeah, we've got time. Uh, Jamie, would you recommend using in-text citations in the application or would it be better off conserving words for content? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what do you mean, Jamie? Could you say a bit more? Um, in-text citations, do you mean like um, referencing something you've read or something that's really inspired you? Um, if, I think that probably is what you mean, um, if something has really ignited your passion. So um, I know when I applied for Bristol, um, I, as part of my, I don't even think there was a Bristol test anymore, a Bristol thing anymore, but there was a test. And as part of that, like I quoted some research that was really important to me that I kind of thought was probably useful in that context. So I did in them, but I don't think I was, um, I don't think that was a word count. Um, if it's if it's relevant um, and it isn't a million authors, because <laughs> that would be a waste of space, um, then yeah, I think that's fine. Um, if it really has inspired you, um, or do you mean citations of your own work? Because when I did my cite, you know, when I did my when I did my qualification, my publications, um, I think I listed them fully. I can't find I can't find it, of course. Of course I can't find it. Um, so yeah, my research and clinical experience to date have a lot, so yeah, it was a bit different. I could, I could break up this whole sheet as I wanted to, and it was important to me to leave white spaces in between so it wasn't too overwhelming. So essentially I, I wasted a couple of lines probably, but I felt that it looked nice. And then I did bold print, but I don't think you can do that anymore. So I put my research and clinical experiences to date have enabled me to contribute the following. And then I did the full references that are full citation. So Stubbs, comma, B, Cooper Evans, comma, MS, Durham, comma, M, etc. Um, and then the whole title and then you know, right up until the page numbers so that if they wanted to cross reference that they could. Um, nowadays, with it being online, you could perhaps think about putting just a bitly link in or something to make it smaller so you could convert it to a smaller link um, but I think still you need to put your names in and then just it's different. I, I think probably if you've done a publication you need to be putting as much in as you can but that's my personal preference um, and then also I did a presentation of that research at um, a national conference so that went on as a publication and then yeah my um <laughs> if you'd like to read it uh durren uh durren mj 2007 older adult psychologists what a friendly bunch <laughs> yes that was my application that got me on annual conference report the siege newsletter number 101 october 2007 page 63 so yes, I did put all that. Um, is that what you mean, Jamie? Phoebe, which questions are the most appropriate to talk about your lived experience and how that shaped you as a clinician? Um, I would say um, other, like other information, but also I'm keen on just doing a little bit of summary at the end. Um, so I would make sure that you're leaving them on something good. Don't just put and I did a training course at the end, like, you know, and I don't know, don't, 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 and um, don't end your application on like a damp squib, <laughs> like, leave them with something exciting, leave them with something that says something about you, um, even if it's just a couple of lines, that's my own personal flavour. Lopez Samuels, what can I reflect on? I'm not sure, what can you reflect on? Um, life, Covid. Having children, not having children, um, being a younger person in a workforce, being an older person in a workforce, uh, anything you like, <laughs> anything you like. Emma Leanne, see more. I have lots of volunteering experience but still trying to secure paid work. Does volunteering experience still hold a lot of value? Yes it does, 
you know, I could be a, I could be an honorary clinical psychologist if I wanted to be, but I'd still be working at the same level of competence. So I think now it's all about your whole time equivalent. Um, so it's about how long you've done it for. Um, so you know, if you're working full time, um, then you've got whole, you know, months and months whole time equivalent. So it's absolutely relevant, especially if it's clinically relevant and under the supervision um, of a qualified psychologist um, is ideal. But you know, forensic psychologist or you know, research um, head honcho. Or, yeah. So I, I, I think it's, I, I would think it's the same, um, but. I might be wrong on that. Um, this I did once have um, a sheet that gave you all the breakdown on how things were scored, and I don't know where that went. Sorry, probably isn't. Wouldn't it be appropriate for me to share that with you anyway? But um, I think they can't discriminate for it being voluntary. I think it's just about how that compares in terms of whole time equivalent. I also couldn't find my first ever application. I don't know where it's gone. Um, I was hoping to share some really cringeworthy things from that. I will still try and look. I just don't have much time at the moment. I've got, I've got a lot on. Um, what with the NHS and private practice and writing a book and you know, responding to you lovely people um, and you know, occasionally feeding my children and sleeping until at least 3.30 in the morning. I'm, yeah, I don't have much spare time. Amina, is it appropriate to bullet point training in the other factors relevant part? Yeah, I would think so. I would want to add extra bits as paragraph, as you've said, not to make it dry, but should this all be incorporated, incorporated as a paragraph? I, I did bullet points, didn't I? I think bullet points are okay. I think so long as you're being clear about what you're saying and why, I didn't do bullet points. Well, I did. I did bullet points for the research. You can't, you can't see that, Amina, can you? For the research, I did... Um, little hyphens in front of each name. Um, so yeah, I think just be clear. Just be clear about what you're doing. Don't make people confused. You know, don't abbreviate things so much that they're like, what, what is she talking about? <laughs> what? Um, just be clear in what you're doing. Um, don't say things just for the sake of it, to fill in space or to try and tick points. So I know obviously gender and Black Lives Matter and you know, Covid and working from home and um, being inclusive, all of these are really important, but you probably can't put all of that in your form and still put across what's unique about you. Um, so don't shove it all in there by just doing, don't do a standalone, standalone two lines about something that are just unrelated to anything else because for me that screams tick box. So if you want to make that relevant, do a reflection on it um, as well. Otherwise, it's just like you know when you're writing in Word and it says, um, oh, what does it say? I can't think. Um, it's basically, it's a fragment. It says this is a fragment, consider re rephrasing. Because you haven't really said anything, you've just said like this tiny thing. Um, and it's, to me, sometimes quite clear that you're just ticking, trying to tick a box. Um, uh, oh, it's just all jumped up and I've lost everybody's stuff. Uh, oh, I don't know what's gone on. Sorry, guys. Um, it's lost what I was doing and jumped to Sonia. I don't know if this is the beginning or the end now, so we might be working backwards. Is it okay to use your own experience with mental illness or other adverse life experiences as examples to illustrate personal character? For sure. But bear in mind that, you know, lots and lots of people will read this and... Um, just share what you're comfortable with sharing and I think as I've said in some of the previous lives I'd be reflecting on why that's important to you is it because you want to make a difference to people who've experienced similar things to you is it because you want to have people experience what you did which was really good quality care I don't know so um, I would share but I would I would talk about how that's informed your how that's informed your practice Hannah Dobbs says yes that is yes it is um Hannah Dobbs, the publication is all in your name, right, great, yeah, absolutely, that sounds super relevant, um, if you haven't got any other publications, definitely sling that in there, you know, that's a high level publication, um, good job, yeah, I would definitely put that, that shows that you can report, um, you know, at a, a government level, pretty good, everyone else is going, wow, <laughs> I haven't got that, um, 
Jamie, sorry, I didn't mean in the application where you list all the qualifications. I meant as part of the first question. In what way have your work and or research, research, <laughs> research experiences made you... Oh, it might be time to have a drink. It's a long question, isn't it? Not reflection on you, reflection on the form. In what way have your work and or research experiences made you a better candidate for training in ClinPsych? Would you list all of them again? I see. I have six years of mental health work and a few qualifications. Um, I would be careful about saying things twice on your form unless you're expanding. So if you've, you know, created some amazing resource during COVID or, you know, you've won an award, um, it's... You know, you could reflect on that later, but I wouldn't say things twice for the sake of it. Um, but do bear in mind that each section you'll be trying to score points. So you'd be trying to think about saying something that still adds to the discussion. Um, excuse me, rubbing my nose. Does that make sense? Damien Trent is watching. Uh, Lauren Grace. Hi, Marianne. I've asked a consultant psychiatrist to do my clinical reference. Main role is clinical research in the NHS. However, I've also recently begun a day a week in the same trust doing an AP role. Is it ambiguous to not be asking the clinical psychologist to do my reference? I feel they don't know me well enough yet and won't be able to report on my clinical skills properly. What I would say is just explain that. Um, isn't there, is there a section on the references that asks you to explain your choice of reference? Or is that a question in the form? So I think it used to be a question in my form. If you want to, so if you want to explain your choice of references, then do that. Um, but I would, I, you know, I would, I would explain that in either in your form or in the reference section if it asks you to do that. Um, Icky, is it taboo to mention lived experience of trauma and recovery and addiction and recovery? Um, get it out there if you're comfortable to have it out there. Don't if you don't. Um, it's up to you. So I wouldn't say it's taboo. Um, I would say make it relevant. So like I'd said about the mental health stuff. Reflect on it. Um, think about how it's how it is relevant, how it is pertinent. Um, think, you know, just just be thoughtful about it, and perhaps ask someone else to review it as well to think to see what they think. Um, because what um, I reviewed an application last year, and I was like, uh, <laughs> either say a bit more or don't say anything at all, because I feel like you've just chucked something in the pot and left me feeling a bit confused. Um, so now I'm like what um what do you mean i don't really get it so just be clear about what you are saying and why is what i would say charlotte when talking about dissemination does it only apply to research or would delivering psychoeducation materials i've created or presentations to other staff members or management count um i wrote a leaflet on separation anxiety in training which became a trust leaflet, so that would be a dissemination. If it, if it's become a service leaflet and people really like it and are talking about it, then I've definitely put that. Um, if it's something that you created and has never been looked at, then it might not be that useful to put. But you know, if you've got something really jazzy that actually you worked really hard on and is really useful to loads of people, including the clients and the serv and and the t and the team members, then absolutely. So I did a leaflet on sleep. Um, for the team um, and yeah that's used so I guess in, in and then it was then because in the NHS now you you have to have like the pub, you know the leaflet team basically make your leaflet for you so they jazzed it all up um, and yeah so it's like a it's a proper trust leaflet now so that would be a publication does that make sense Charlotte um, I'd forgotten about that <laughs> there we go um, Presentations to other staff members or management? Probably not, unless it was like on an audit you did, you might be able to wing that. Um, if it's just a chat at the MDT meeting, maybe not. But if you are struggling for, for anything else, then I'd say it can't hurt. Jamie, sorry I meant references, i.e. Smith. Um, what, like so for a paper you've read um, and something that you think is useful I wouldn't I wouldn't fill your application with that but it, I'd say it's probably okay to do it once or twice if something something really floats your boat um, 
Amina, is creating a survey for all staff within the Trust to complete clusters dissemination or would it only be the results of the research? I think the latter. Yeah, I think it would be the latter. And also our Trust said that nobody's allowed to send Survey Monkey other than them now, so I'd just be careful about whether you're actually saying that you've done something that is not actually allowed anymore. Um, your Trust might allow any surveys conducted by anybody, ours doesn't. Um, yeah, I think it's probably probably just the the analysis of it and the interpretation of it and the putting pen to paper stuff. You know, it's certainly useful if you've kind of thought about that survey and wanting to find the data, then that shows that you've got some skills in research. But I would just be careful about whether actually you're allowed to do that. Um, it's, it's certainly a research skill, isn't it? But I don't think actually putting it out there counts as a publication. So I'd put it in your research and relevant experiences um, if it's within trust procedures that you're allowed to do that. But I don't think that counts as a dissemination until you actually try and submit it or present the findings more formally. Hi, Ruth. I imagine you've wandered off, but you did watch for a bit. Um, Gag and Preet. Would creating a risk protocol for the NHS research department I work in count as a dissemination? I created it with one colleague and we shared with the team and it was eventually implemented. Is your name on it? Probably, yeah. I'm trying to think about risk policies I've read. Trust policies certainly say who they've been written by and when they were last amended. If your name's on there, give it a go. Um, one of our, the, in fact, I don't know, I've not spotted that she's watching, but um, one of the honorees that worked with, us, uh, worked with us a couple of summers ago helped me. So I wrote the content for the leaflet and she did the leaflet and kind of put it all in there. And so that would have cast as a publication for her, the sleep leaflet. Um, but yeah, if your, name, if your name's on it um, and it's widely available to your whole trust um, or beyond, then yeah, I think that's relevant. Hayley, is it okay to abbreviate things like ASD, LD, LAC to cut down on characters as they're well-known abbreviations? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there is an abbreviation thing on the Royal College of Psychiatrists website, isn't there? Um, but generally, within formal written word language, we would explain it, then bracket it, and then use the... Um, then use the abbreviation. If you're really, really short, I would say it's okay, but it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Amelia, I've just finished my master's, so I'm technically looking for employment. I'm not sure how to say this in my application without sounding bad. I'd probably reflect on the state of the world at the moment, Amelia. That's an excellent excuse, isn't it? Um, I would say that you, you know, you finished your master's in an ideal world, you know, you would have hoped to have found appropriate um, employment, however, with the pandemic and the, you know, the massive recession that's coming, it's been difficult, you know, reflect on that, you could reflect on how it feels to have, you know, finished your master's and to be full of all this hope and optimism and, and you know, skills and experience to then find yourself feeling a bit impotent. Um, it's not what, not what you imagined, it's not what you hoped for, it's not what you wanted. Um, because it's, you know, it's not your fault, Amelia. If there'd been lots of jobs to apply for um, and you'd applied for one and been interviewed, then you'd have a job. But if there aren't any jobs that are appropriate to your skills and experience, then you can't apply for them. That's not your fault. It's just the state of the world and it's the state of the NHS or you know, private organisations or whoever it is you're, try you're hoping to, um, to, to look at. And it's, it's perhaps worth just thinking about widening your search, so thinking about local authorities, thinking about, um, you know, private organisations like St Andrew's Hospital, um, Signet, uh, Priory Group. Just make sure that you're setting up job alerts for them as well. It's not just NHS. Uh, Lopez. Oh, where have you gone, Lopez? There we are. I work in the forensic outreach service around Barnet, Enfield and Haringey. 
Here I support patients who are battling mental health issues, also known to the probation service for a variety of offences. Sounds like a fascinating role. Regarding your question about understanding what the role entails, I see. So do you find that because of your experience that you find rapport easier and that actually you feel like you're um, having to do less legwork to establish that rapport because, um, I don't know, <laughs> You can't, I guess you effectively talk the same language um, and that's not a racist kind of um, connotation but you know if, if you kind of talk the talk and you walk the walk um, and you you know you know what they're talking about and you know their struggles um, because you've been there too then that's going to help your rapport Lopez um, so that might be appropriate but I think I would also weave in there that it's appropriate to to um, reflect upon that within supervision to check that you know the boundaries are being maintained and that um, it's it's still a useful and helpful therapeutic relationship so we are not our clients friends um, so it's, it's useful to kind of weave that in there is that useful Lopez give me a love if it is um, dokey hi Sam congratulations uh, hi Esme hi Marianne Callum, this is. Oh, it won't let me tick more. There we go. Spoke to you on LinkedIn a week or two back. Was I, was I friendly? Was I nice? <laughs> um, just wanted to say a big thank you to your reassuring comments about transitioning to ClinPsych. You're more than welcome. Of course, I'm coming to the end of my MSc and will be starting a PhD. It may be that I develop experience with a clinical population during that time and then apply for the Clin Doctorate. After I'll gain experience via research and teaching. Lovely. So just a little, a little feedback there. There wasn't a question, but um, good. Yep. Yeah. You know, everybody's welcome to these. You know, there might be people who don't have any interest in being Clint Sykes, um, but are, are, are coming along anyway. We've still got 47 of you. Um, Becky Heath, hello. Would unis take into account, Sham, would unis take into account additional credits from short clinical training? That is what I'm not sure about. So the question does say qualifications. There isn't, to my knowledge, a section for training. And I think... I guess that's to stop you putting in like, you know, I did my MAPA and, um, you know, I did my fire safety training because it's not that exciting. But, if, you know, if you've done a three day compassion focused therapy course with Paul Gilbert, that's pretty cool. That's pretty relevant. You're going to be able to weave that stuff in. Um, so whilst it might not be any additional credit, it might give you further skills and experience for your qualifications and not for your experience and for your ability to integrate theory into practice so you might not necessarily get a tick for it um, or a point for it but it shows that you're yeah you're able to underpin your stuff with the theory Abigail hi uh, Emma thinking about time oh we're, we're at an hour I might be wrapping up soon to get ready to go to bed um, Emma, are research skills and your capability with this as important as your experience? Yeah, um, they do want you to be... You're allowed to not be an expert in research and reflection and, um, you know, clinical experience and academia. You're allowed, to, you're allowed to not be amazing at all of those, but you, they do expect you to have some research experience. Um, and to be able to think about that and kind of reflect on that and talk about it. So you don't need to be, you know, I had three publications, one of which was a presentation and one of which was a, you know, a conference report. So arguably, and, and one was a publication, but arguably I didn't have loads, but it showed that I was putting myself out there and people were, were kind of taking me seriously. Uh, oh dear, things have just disappeared. What's going on? Uh, our Emma, our research skills and your... Oh, we've done that one. Amina's giving us a bit more info, everybody. The survey's been created under supervision as part of a psychology research group in our trust, so I'm hoping it's okay. Thank you for asking the question, otherwise you're welcome. Glad it's useful. Becky, what's the best thing you've read on an application form? Good question. Uh, well, recently I was very impressed by somebody that had won an award. Um, I can't remember who it was from, but won an award for their thesis in their MSc. Like, amazing. 
<laughs> incredible. Like, I think it was like a BPS award or something. That's pretty good. I've never won a BPS award. Um, so yeah, that was impressive. Make sure if, you know, if you, if you're getting feedback about how useful your stuff is, that's in there. You know, evidence is that you're good and that you, you know what you're doing. Lucy, I struggle to write my personality. Do you have any advice? Oh, Luce, sorry. Um, you could practice talking to camera. <laughs> you know, just practice getting comfortable in your skin. Think about reading up on some compassion-focused therapy. Be a bit nicer to yourself. Think about what makes you unique. Um, perhaps ask your friends about what makes you unique. Um, perhaps ask your supervisor about what they like about you um, to help you think about what your unique skills and strengths are. Emma, I haven't got any publications, so I'm stuck as what I could put in the publications section. It won't let me click see more. Hold on. In my master's, I was part of making a new measure to capture social interaction styles in atypical development. Would I be able to talk about that in that section? Was the measure published? If it was, I think that counts as a publication. Did the measure come to fruition? Was it used by anybody, even if it's not used currently? I think that could probably be a publication. Mm -hmm. Yes, give me a like. If it was, give me a crying face if it wasn't. Are you still here, Emma? Still got 42 of you. Uh, oh, I think I've reached the end of the questions, which is good because we're, we're drawing to a close. Sham, what about credits from clinical training delivered by uni? Uh, could you say a bit more? So do you mean that you've popped along to some of the clinical... Emma, let's give me a thumbs up. Um, yeah, Emma, if it's used, then that's a publication, I would say. Great. So now you're like, yes, I've got one. Um, what about credits? So do you mean that you've popped along to some of the open training sessions on clinical training? So if you rubbed shoulders with trainee clin psychs already, I know that when I was... Um, in training, the lovely um, Felicity came to join us as an assistant um, and she later got onto training a couple of years later. Um, whether she, um, it is awesome Sonia, well done, she's congratulating Emma. Whether she mentioned that in her application, I do not know. Um, I don't know. Um, if, you've, if you've attended and you've learnt stuff, it's worth mentioning. Um, but when you say what about credits, did you actually, did you actually get like, are they just like supervision CPD points? Is that what you mean? Um, Amelia Lilly asks me if I'll be doing another Alive again soon. Can I have some sort of love, like, from anybody who would want that again, or have you had your fill of me? I think it might be a delayed reaction or else nobody wants this at all. Um, can I get some something? <laughs> i got like radio silence here, no one's saying anything. I wonder if the emojis have disappeared for some reason because I haven't seen any for ages. Um, I don't know, it might just be you that wants it, Amelia. Um, Sham. Oh, Icky, go and put your son to bed. Yeah, mine are in bed already. Yes. Um, Sham, is it, it's an eight-month health tra eight month training course on long-term health conditions. Yeah, eight months. That's a long time. Yeah, I'd put that in for sure. But is it a qualification? Mm, I don't know. Do you get any letters? Do you get anything? Do you just do you get like a PG cert or anything? Um, it's a bit woolly, isn't it? But I don't know. I don't know. If you're running out of space, you could put it in there, couldn't you? Uh, if, not if you're running out of space, if you've got a bit of space. Gag and preet. Quickly on my risk protocol. Oh, see more, see more. It is more of a guidance for the research department only and tailored to risk in a research setting. Would that still be a dissemination? Are people using it? Are they using it regularly? Are they finding it useful? If the answer is yes, I think that's fine. Lots of likes. Are there, Emma? I didn't see a single one. Where are these likes? I can't see any likes. It's like radio silence here. <laughs> where, are the, where, where are all the likes? Um, 
Ashley, will you be doing a live session on interview tips? I've managed to get interviews two years in a row, but really struggle with confidence at interview. Yes, I will. Yeah, I will. Because you've asked me specially. So um, interview season is like March, April time. Is that right? I would say give me a like. Give me likes anyway. Come on, give me some likes, but I won't see them. I don't know why. Um, I had to complete assignments, which I had to pass. Okay, that yeah, that sounds good. Um, it's just not necessarily... Um, it's not necessarily a qualification as such, but stick it down. Eight months is a long time. Amelia, you've been enjoying them and would come back. Oh, icky, can't you see the billions of, I guess that's like, no, I can't, I can't. Um, very delayed, but please do. Vicky Webb is watching. Hi, Vicky, I haven't seen you in so long. There were loads of likes or loves. Where are my likes or loves, Scat Sonia? <laughs> Where are they? I didn't see a single one. I haven't seen any likes for ages. Icky, um, billions of likes and loves. Oh, good. There have been loads of likes. Where are they? What's the most persuasive thing you've read in an application, says Becky. Um, that's a very tricky question. Uh, oh, thanks, Gag and Preet. I will consider that a like. Um, I don't know where all the likes have gone. It's quite upsetting, isn't it? Everybody likes love. Um... Most persuasive thing you've read on an application? I think it's just something really unique and brilliant about you. What makes you different, you know? What is really good about you? Um, <laughs> how arrogant am I? Like, oh, what did I say? Um, what, you know, why would I pick you over somebody else? Um, you know, if you've really been a great support in helping modernise services or it's such a hard question because everybody is unique but what I want to be able to get is a flavour on the f on the form about what your own unique gifts and talents are um, Sham you're more than welcome uh, oh Hannah says tons of likes and hearts I didn't see a single one it's just heartbreaking um, Lauren thank you for spending your evening supporting us all you're more than welcome I've really enjoyed it like I said if you um, have found it useful I would welcome any interaction on my social media saying as much um, because then I can put it out there um, and say that it's useful or drop me um, something on my testimonials on my website um, I won't quote your name I'll just say a psychology live event so you might have seen some of that this week um, please do like me on YouTube, subscribe to me, that's what you do on YouTube, isn't it? Um, Good Thinking Psychological Services. Please like my page on Facebook, you probably do already. Um, please um, connect, follow, follow me, follow me on Instagram, I'm not very good at Instagram. Um, good Thinking Psychological. Um, and connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, Marianne Trent, feel free to like, share, comment, interact. Um, I do, oh, I love LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, if you are so inclined to check out my Our Tricky Brain kit, talk about it to your um, qualifieds, that would be marvellous, um, because it's really great, it's really useful, people love it. Um, it's part of the compassion focused therapy approach for helping people um, learn more about why we struggle with um, trauma and depression in the way that we do from our uniquely put together human brains. You can get that from my website shop. Um, if, like I said last week, if you wanted a career consultation session to think about you in more detail and think about your form then you can have that for 99 pounds just book that through my website shop similarly if you're after a form review um then that's 50 pounds um believe me that's good value for money because it takes me hours um so i'm not making any money on that and that wasn't the function of these lives um but that is what people were asking from me um so um yeah you can check out the book and you can check out my media publications um, you can check out my BBC interview by going to um, my YouTube page. I think, my dears, that is it. I thought there was one other point that I'd forgotten to put down on my sheet and I'd forgotten it. But would you find, so it sounds like you find it, would find it helpful to do this again next week. Um, so shall we say for 7.15, um, Monday the whatever it is next week, 28th, is it? Would that be useful? I can't tell because my likes and loves aren't working. But people are dropping off now because I'm obviously wind, wind, winding up. So thank you so much um, for spending your evening with me. Um, my kids are asleep, which is marvellous. Um, so that's why I do it at this time, um, 7.15. 
Um, and then I've got a little bit of time to to do something before I go to bed at 9.15. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I, I just am exhausted and my kids get up early. So um, I like to go to bed early so I can get my eight, eight hours in because sleep is really important to me. I could talk about sleep for another whole hour. Like sleep is so important to mental and physical health. So take yourself seriously. Um, put yourselves first. You're very important. Don't try and burn yourself at both ends of the candle. Um, you are important, you matter, and you know you guys are out there doing really important work across the whole country, and you've got to you've got to treat yourself as important, otherwise you're not going to be able to support these wonderful people that we work with. I feel like I'm not ready to say goodbye, but um, goodbye we must. Okay, thanks guys. Nice to catch up with you. Bye then. Bye.